Hello everyone, this is Diego Angarita. I want to welcome you to this video um, when we're going to talk about desmystifying the 8-bit versus 16-bit myth. So, in contrary to what um, the common belief is in among the people um, of the need to have to work on a 16-bit file to prevent decreasing quality and bonding, uh, it usually happens on a... Um, Images that contain significant areas of gradients in the background. Uh, I see others also teaching how to fix this issue by introducing digital noise and weird artifacts to the images to hide the problem with the hope that the banding will disappear. So I'll bring you the solution and I hope you pay close attention. You see, back when I didn't know this technique, I was also frustrated having to work in huge files with hundreds of layers on my complex composites and hoping that Photoshop will behave good and it won't crash and praying that uh, handles my 16, 20 and even bigger PSB files. And still it was taking me several minutes to open and save these files. So I had the fortune to work on and be trained by one of the best retouching and post-production studios in the world. They're based in London. And they, these guys, they used to, they used to have, an, I, I, I still believe they have um, an R&D program. Uh, when we used to spend several hours uh, at a time working on complex issues uh, on how to improve our workflow, and come up with really cool techniques that enhance, enhance our, our performance and retouching techniques. Um, that's why not many people know about this technique, I believe, uh, just because everything was kept in house, uh, sort of in a secret. So there is there is not much sharing about these techniques in the retouching world. So back in 2012, I got introduced to this technique that I'm about to show you. Uh, so yeah, you, you still can work on an 8-bit file and speed up the workflow while not having to worry about banding. So let's jump to the screen and let me show you how it's done. Okay, so once we are processing the file in Capture One, uh, we do all the necessary corrections and then in order to process it using capture one we need to make sure this here and the format is a 16-bit file and then we process the raw file using capture one equally once we are in camera raw in photoshop we have to make sure to check the settings here that they are a 16-bit process. We do our color corrections. We balance the image at uh, the desired look. And then we make sure that, again, that is a 16-bit here. And then we open the row, the process image on Photoshop. Once in Photoshop, what we do, uh, image mode, and then we can convert that back to a bit, and we're ready to start the retouching. All right, so let's assume that we already went and did the retouching on this file, but this is an 8-bit file. All retouching was done on 8-bit. So if we bring the solar OS visualization curve, we notice that there is some banding going on around the image. This is usually is created by us, switch that off, but by doing some corrections layer, which I'm gonna show you here, um, I'm creating sort of big brushes or, or sort of uh, grads. So, Let's pretend that we are going to create sort of a little bit more vignetting, darken vignetting on the background. 
So let's create an adjustment curve. Let's invert this and then with a gradient tool let's darken the areas where we want the vignetting to go and then with a circular gradient tool we bring back a little bit more on the center so we can notice here this image is creating much more banding because of the correction that we've done if we reveal the mask this is what we get so we get a transition but not that smooth of a transition yeah so to avoid that what we what we're gonna do is taking this layer to a new document this correction layer so we click here outside duplicate layer create a new document okay that we reveal the mask we do image 16 bit this one this mask we're going to channels So we're going to add some blur. So because this is a big area, we do a Gaussian blur. We give it a, around a hundred. And then if we see here, we already start seeing that the transition that we have, let me go back, is smooth out now. Before and after. Then we add a little bit of noise so filter noise add noise we give it a month of one and the distribution of um is uniform we okay that and as we see having gone through this to that it's much more smoother transition yeah then we have to bring this layer this alpha to our working document to do that what we have to do is command a select all the canvas command c to copy we can close this now don't save and here we press command v and then our correction is now applied to our working file. So you don't have to do that every time for every correction uh, manually, deselect. What we can do is um, we create um, an action that it give us, it give us all these steps. I go here one action that is 16 bit, 100% blur. blur yeah and then also i got one that is uh, for 50 for small brushes small brush strokes or in a in a smaller area um so if we do that the same correction let me show you how it's done so we do a curve assuming that we're doing the same uh, adjustments that we want a vignette in okay so we see here that it's not as smooth what we do is apply this action and it's done automatically so before and after yeah so it doesn't have to be that small of a process you can automate this this um 
this process yeah all this helps every time we do a correction that we don't uh, create a banding but we, we instead we sort of smooth those transitions um, let's leave it on like like that and then let's see how how it looks so here we still go the obviously we still go the the banding and then the transition is not that smooth but because um let's assume that we already deliver we already finished this file the retouching and we want to send it to the client yeah so let's say that there, this has been approved and then this is ready to go out and print so for that what we do is that we take all the document we 16 bit that and then we flatten the document we do a flattening in the top so with a chef uh, alt command a we do a um, flattening the top of all what is below and this is our system bit merge then we can take this back to a bit and you will see the difference between this transition and the one that is on an a bit so this is no, our transition with that let's call let's put it in red this is our transition when there is a converting from a bit to 16 bit and flatten that in the top this is our delivery file yeah or, or our delivery image yeah and then we switch that off that's how it looks without without converting it so working on 8 bit so as you see photoshop it holds as far as you process you start with you with your raw process on a 16 bit file you can convert it in photoshop on a 8 bit and bring it back to 16 bit and it, pre it still preserve all information so this is this is the myth I'm talking about that a lot of people think that once you convert to 8 bit that's it photoshop lose all the all all the information which is not true it, it, it still keep and maintain and retain all the all the 16 bit uh, capabilities and that happens even if you save the file and open it the next day that's totally fine you still remember that 16 bit because you started with a 16 bit file yeah so this uh, has helped me on my big com composites um, imagery and my workflow has speed up since I found I found out about this technique. So that's it for now guys. Um, I hope you enjoy and yeah, see you soon.